Bees are fascinating creatures. They pollinate our crops and give us honey, but that is not all. They are also good at solving problems, and they're even helping scientists make advances in medicine. In a colony, bees work in a systematic and organized manner. Each has a specific task to complete, but how do they communicate with each other? Well, the research team, team here in Berlin has discovered a way to infiltrate a hive to find out more. Berlin Tempelhof, now closed. It was once Europe's largest airport. In an old weather station here, scientists are pursuing a Cold War activity, spying. But not on the Soviets. They're secretly observing bees to find out more about how they communicate with each other. When foraging bees return from a scouting trip, they're able to tell their compatriots about good potential sources of food. By performing what's called the waggle dance, they can convey information about how far away the source is, where it is, and its quality. But how? I want to understand it, so I spy on them with cameras and microphones and things like that. But I also have to be able to say something. I have to try to use what I already know and learn from it. That means I have to employ a robot, a copy of a bee, to access this avenue of communication. And this is his secret agent, a robot bee made of foam plastic with plastic wings. The bee researcher can make them vibrate at the touch of a button. Driven by tiny electric motors, the agent has the ability to enter the hive and perform its dance. Appropriately enough, the researchers call their little helper Robo-Bee. Will the real bees accept the robot as one of their own? Will they understand the information encoded in its waggle dance? These are the first tests after two years of development work. Tim Landgraf has Robo-Bee do his thing. But the hive's first reaction is disappointing. The plastic invader is bitten and stung again and again. The robot's moves are apparently not realistic enough. Robo-Bee must be missing some important information. To build something that works, I first have to understand the system. Then I have to produce findings that will improve my system. It's a vicious circle, and I don't know if I can break it. I want to build the robot to understand something that I have to first understand in order to build the robot. But if at first you don't succeed, Landkraft tests a variety of new materials and systematically begins to change the individual moves in Robo-Bee's performance. What are the key stimuli that will cause the bees and the hive to react? Is the robot's body temperature a problem or the frequency of its wing beat? With every new experiment, the researcher hopes he'll crack the code. Then one day, success. A few bees begin to show some interest in the robot's dance. They watch Robo-Bee's performance closely for several minutes. That interest they showed is unique in the entire history of robotic attempts to communicate with bees. We've managed that at least. But we don't know yet whether or not the bees understand the dance, because we still just don't have enough data. The experiments continue. One after the other, the researcher begins to tag as many bees as possible. By numbering individuals, he can identify them in his study. That will help him in his next attempt, to have Robo-Bee guide his living counterparts to a source of food placed around 200 meters away. There, a colleague keeps track of every incoming bee. In the research station, Landkraf lets Robo-Bee strut his stuff and writes down which of the tagged bees pay close attention. If they have understood the robot's waggle dance, then they should show up a little later at the food source. It works. Bees that Robo-Bee has instructed are able to navigate to the destination the robot has described. But many other bees refuse to listen. The researchers have now begun to understand the language of the bees and even imitate it. But they're missing an important piece of the puzzle. 
who speaks with whom in the hive, and who is willing to listen. One idea is that it could be dependent on bee peer groups. Let's call them groups of friends. Bees that dance for one another, and that as a group follow the instructions danced by others. Are there peer groups among bees? Finding out is the researcher's next goal. Cameras will film the hive around the clock for the next two months. Marks like these allow the computer to identify each and every bee at all times. Only a few of the bees have been marked so far, but to reveal group structures, all 3,000 have to be observed. It's like peeling an onion. There's always the next layer down. We're nowhere close to the end of it yet. But I believe that even though these are just bees, they have a lot of very interesting stories to tell. And with the help of RoboBee, we're learning how to understand them.